For all species of the cat family, mating is painful. It's not the biting that hurts her, it's the male's penis. It's barbed with more than a hundred tiny hooks, each about a millimeter long. They're made of keratin, a tough fibrous protein normally found in nails and claws. As the male withdraws, the hooks scrape the walls of the vagina. The barbs have two functions. They help scratch out any competing sperm from previous matings, and they also induce ovulation. In both lions and domestic cats, the pain of scraping stimulates the female's brain. In response, it releases a specific hormone, which triggers the eggs in her ovaries to begin maturing. She needs to mate at least four times before the concentration is high enough for her eggs to fully ripen. The more she mates, the likelier she is to get pregnant. Despite the discomfort, most species of cats have a remarkably energetic sex life. During her receptive period, a lioness mates up to an astonishing and exhausting 100 times a day. Our female will only mate with males from her own pride. Lions are the only members of the cat family that are social. They live in groups of between two and 30 related females and up to six males. Cats are different. They're naturally loners. The female will mate with as many strangers as possible. Each mating lasts just seconds. Afterwards, she rolls over. This probably encourages the sperm to reach deep inside the uterus. For the sperm, it's both a race and a struggle for survival. First, they confront a wall of thick mucus. In everyday life, this protects the female from infection. But now she's mated, it becomes an obstacle only the very strongest sperm can conquer. The mucus wall is patrolled by an army of white blood cells, primed to destroy any foreign bodies they encounter. It's an arduous journey. Just 1% of the sperm will complete it and only a handful of those will succeed in fertilizing an egg. It's not just the female's body that causes problems for the sperm. In a house cat, a fifth of all sperm are simply not viable. And in lions, almost half the sperm are deformed. Some have multiple heads, others two tails. Many are incapable of swimming at all. The lion's low sperm quality appears to be a result of inbreeding. When two closely related individuals have cubs, sperm malformations are much more likely. Scientists believe a major ice age 200,000 years ago could have drastically reduced lion numbers. With fewer mates to choose from, closely related individuals were forced to breed and genetic diversity plummeted. Lions have since recovered but their poor sperm quality is a legacy of this ancient population bottleneck. Inside our lioness and our cat, the few surviving sperm reach the womb about 30 minutes after mating. Here, they encounter another problem. 
her eggs won't be fully mature for another 36 hours. Sensing this, the sperm swim into caves inside the walls of the uterus. Here, they bide their time. Finally, the eggs burst from the ovaries, and the sperm are recharged and ready. They have absorbed calcium from the uterus wall, which helps drive their tails faster. They detach and take up the chase. Speed is now vital, as the newly matured eggs will only be viable for 24 hours. Finally, two and a half days after its journey began, the first sperm reaches the egg and in its final act, burrows through. The egg membrane hardens, locking out any further intruders. Their marathon journey wasted. It's a key moment. The wombs of the cat and the lion no longer contain sperm and eggs. They contain embryos. Lions and cats in the making. Just moments old. Their common ancestor is unknown, but in genetic studies, biologists have calculated that all members of the cat family originated from an individual that lived in Asia 10 million years ago. From this ancient forebear, cats and lions branched out. They evolved and adapted to their particular environments. The differences between breeds of domestic cat are a surprisingly new phenomenon. People only started selectively breeding cats after Darwin published his theory of evolution in 1859. They became fascinated by choosing which cats to mate with which and what coats or features resulted. Just 150 years later, the results of these experiments are 40 distinct breeds, and we can trace almost all of them. Amazingly, variations in only about 15 out of the cat's more than 20,000 genes are responsible for the major differences in fur color. A single bald kitten born in the 60s led to the Sphinx breed. A kitten born in Oregon in 1982 became the mother of the curly-furred Laperm. Our mother-to-be is also the result of selective breeding. She's a Bengal cat a breed created in California in the 1970s by crossing a small species of wild cat, the Asian leopard, with domestic cats to produce a tiny tame leopard for the home. <laughs> 